are getting near the end of our sideways stories. I wonder what, how it will end. Anyway, we are on chapter 28. Nancy. Hmm, does that look like a Nancy? That's Nancy. Nancy had big hands and big feet. He didn't like his name. He thought it was a girl's name. None of the other children in Mrs. Jewell's class thought that Nancy's name was odd. They didn't think of it as a girl's name or as a boy's name. Nancy was just the, kid, the name of the quiet kid with the big hands and feet who sat over there in the corner next to John. Nancy was very quiet and shy. He was ashamed of his name. He had only one friend, a girl who went to class on the 23rd story of Wayside School. They were friends for a good reason. He didn't know her name, and she didn't know his. They just called each other, hey, you, or just you. Nancy was afraid to ask his friend what her name was, because then he might have to tell her his name. He never could figure out why she never asked, but he was happy just to leave well enough alone. One morning, Nancy and his friend were late. When they got to the 23rd story, his friend's teacher was waiting, for, waiting outside. Hurry up! You're late, Mac, said the teacher. Nancy's face... Nancy's friend's face turned red. She didn't move. Come on, Mac, shake a leg, get the lead out, said the teacher. Your name is Mac, said Nancy. Mac was very pretty. She had red hair and freckles. Her face was covered. Oh, she covered her face and ran into the room. My name is Nancy, Nancy called after her. Mac stepped back outside. I was ashamed to tell you my name, she said. Me too, said Nancy. Nancy's a girl's name. Oh, I think it's cute, said Mac. I like the name Mac, said Nancy. Mac is a boy's name, said Mac. My mother has a rich aunt named Nancy, said Nancy. That's why she gave me the name. My mother once had a dog named Mac, said Mac. Hey, do you want to trade, said Nancy. Can we, asked Mac. I don't see why not, said Nancy. Okay, said Mac. They both spun around a hundred times in opposite directions until they felt so dizzy that they fell over. When they stood up, Mac was Nancy, and Nancy was Mac. They said goodbye. Then Mac raced up to Mrs. Jewell's room. He was no longer shy. Hi, everybody. My name's Mac, he announced. I traded names. He held out his big hand. Todd jumped up and shook it. Hi, Mac, he said. Glad to meet you. How you doing, Mac, said Ron. Howdy, Mac, said Terrence. Nice to meet you, Mac, said Bebe. You traded names, asked Jason. Jason didn't like his name either. That's right, Jason, old boy, said Mac. Is that allowed, asked Jason. Why not, said Mac. Hey, anybody want to trade, Jason called. I'll trade with you, said Terrence. He didn't like his name either. Wait, I'll trade with you, Terrence, said Marisha. Marisha didn't like her name. No, he's trading with me, said Jason. I'll trade with you, Marisha, said Damien. No thanks, said Mary Marisha. I'll trade with you, Damien, said Mrs. Jules. No, I want to be Mrs. Jules, said Stephen. It turned out that nobody in Mrs. Jules' class liked his name. The children all spun around in different directions until they all got dizzy and fell over. And when they stood up, nobody who knew anybody was. What are you going to do, Mrs. Jules, asked Leslie, who was really Eric Bacon. My name is not Mrs. Jules, it's Marisha, answered Terrence, who was really Jason. It is not. I'm Marisha, said Dee Dee, who was really Joe. You're both wrong, said Marisha. I'm Mrs. Jules. This went on for an hour. At last, they figured out who the real Rondi was. She was missing her two front teeth. After they figured out Rondi, they were able to get Allison pretty easily, and then from there, they got DJ, Damien, and Mrs. Jules. She was the oldest one. Eventually, they figured out who everybody really was. They had some difficulty deciding which Eric was which, and actually, they're still not absolutely sure. Everybody just decided to keep his own name. The children didn't like them, but it made things much easier. Mac and Nancy kept their new names, but when they were together, they just still called each other, Hey, you, or just plain, you. All right, uh-oh. Chapter not 29, I feel like I should read it. It looks like the return of Mrs. Gorf, doesn't it? <gasps> Let's find out. 29 is Stephen. Stephen had green hair. He had purple ears and a blue face. He wore his sister's pink dancing shoes and green leotards. The leotards matched his hair, and he was all dressed up as a goblet for Mrs. Joel's Halloween party. But unfortunately, it wasn't Halloween. Ha <laughs> ha, you sure look silly, said Jason. Jason was Stephen's best friend. So do you, said Stephen. 
Boy, are you dumb, said Jenny. Halloween is on Sunday. Today's only Friday. You're the one who's dumb, said Stephen. Ha, you probably come to school on Sunday. Mrs. Jewell said we'd have the party today. But none of the other kids wore costumes, only Stephen. All right, class, Mrs. Jewell said. It's time for our party. See, said Stephen. Mrs. Jules gave each child a cookie that looked like an orange witch with a black hat. She laughed when she saw Stephen and forgot to give him one. Stephen didn't ask for it. He was afraid that she'd laugh again. The children finished their cookies in less than 30 seconds. All right, class, the party is over. We have a lot of work to do. That's some party. Stephen felt like a fool. The party lasted less than a minute. He'd spend the rest of the day wearing his silly goblin suit. Look, Stephen's wearing his sister's leotards, laughed Dana. They're green, just like his hair, said Fatso. Everybody laughed. Mrs. Jules began the arithmetic lesson. She wrote on the blackboard, two plus two equals five. That's wrong, shouted Joy. Mrs. Jules tried again, two plus two equals three. That wasn't right either. She added two and two again and got 43. It was useless. No matter how hard she tried, she could get she could not get two plus two to equal four. I don't understand it, she said. They've always equaled four before. Suddenly she screamed. The chalk turned into squiggling worm. She dropped it on her foot. Then all the lights went out and the blackboard lit up like a movie screen. Ooh. A woman appeared on the screen. She had a long tongue and pointed ears. She stepped off the screen and into the room. It was the ghost of Mrs. Gorf ran her fingernails across the blackboard. Trick or treat, you rotten kid, she said. Now I'll get even with every last one of you. Where's Todd? Who is that? asked Mrs. Jules. Mrs. Gorf, said Damien. Who's Mrs. Gorf? asked Mrs. Jules. She was the meanest teacher she ever had, said Rondi. What happened to her? asked Mrs. Jules. Lewis ate her, said Jason. Well, I'm not going to allow this, said Mrs. Jules. Get out of my classroom, she demanded. It's Halloween, sweet teacher, said Mrs. Gorf. Ghosts can go anywhere they like. I'll come for a little, I've come for a little class reunion. But it isn't Halloween, said Mrs. Jules. Halloween is still two days away. I know, but Halloween falls on a Sunday this year, so we are celebrating it on Friday. Stephen leaped up from his seat. See, I was right. Today is the day we celebrate it, the Friday before. Mrs. Gorf proved it. He ran up to Mrs. Gorf. They all laughed at me and made me feel stupid because I was the only one who got dressed up, but they were the ones who were wrong. You and I are right. He put his arms around Mrs. Gorf and hugged her. Mrs. Gorf gasped and disappeared. The lights came back on. Mrs. Jules picked up the piece of chalk from the floor. She wrote on the blackboard, two plus two equals four. That's good, she said. When two plus two doesn't equal four, anything can happen. All the children who had laughed at Stephen now called him a hero, but they told him to change out of his silly costume. So at lunch, Stephen went home, washed up, and changed. He came back wearing blue jeans and a polo shirt. Of course, his hair was still green. It always was.